Hey, Anthony, welcome to the His and Her Money Hello, Show. Hello, Anthony, welcome back to welcome the His back. and Her that's Money right. Show. That's right, that's right. That's right, man. This is family, man. Yes. I'm just so honored to be back with you all. I, I love you all. We talk often. So, just, again, thank you all for having me on the show. We're glad to have you, man, yeah. because you just dropped a brand new, fantastic book called Debt Free Degree, which is a yeah. phrase that really sounds impossible nowadays, <laughs> man. When you put all those words together, debt-free degree, yeah. it just seems like uh, a unicorn, something that's totally unattainable, but you're here to bust down all those myths. And so we're glad to have you here back with us. But for those who are unfamiliar with who you are and the work that you do, can you just say hello to everyone and let them know what you're all about? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello to the His and Her Money Tribe. Uh, my name is Anthony O'Neill, uh, Ramsey personality, one of the speakers here of five um, on the uh, Dave Ramsey Solutions team. Uh, you have uh, Dave Ramsey himself, who's a head lead, and then uh, he's backed by Rachel Cruz, his daughter, Chris Hogan, Christy Wright, uh, Ken Coleman, who's in the career space, and then you have your boy, uh, Anthony O'Neill, who's passionate about the teens, millennials, um, and young couples, helping them really transition into the real world and avoiding student loans, avoiding debt, and, and really getting out there to really live their dreams and having a fresh start, a solid start, and a solid foundation for their lives. So we do that by avoiding a, by avoiding debt, having a clear vision, setting clear boundaries that gets you going towards that. So that's really my heart. That's my passion. And I'm just excited to share that with you all today. Awesome. So excited to have you. So let's talk about why is it important for um, a student or even a parent to consider debt free uh, college at all yeah. for their child? Because I think the norm right now is student loans. Like a lot of people are just used to it. They think that that's the only option. That's the only way. So why should we as parents be looking at the debt free route? You know, when we think about that, you're right. You know, since you're saying that this, it's become the norm, student loans have become the norm, but normal is not setting up our college graduates for success. Instead of it, instead of that, it's setting them up for failure. The average college student will graduate with about $35,000 in student loan debt. Now we're talking about the average, uh, but you and I, we're in this together. We see several people who have $100,000, $200,000, even up to $300,000 in student loan debt, and they can't even really go into their future, go into their dream jobs, do what they really want to do do what's birthed inside of them because they're bounded by debt. So they have to get just a job just to make ends meet. Just a recent study came out that nearly 25% of individuals who are student loan borrowers um, are delinquent. They are behind. So that means we have about 10 to 11 million individuals who are currently in default. And by the end of this year, we'll have another million. So when we really break all this math down, this means every 28 seconds, we have someone going into default every single day. And this is not what I want. I do not want our young people starting off their life stressed and not even really enjoying the last four years because they, they've been stressed uh, going to college, trying to figure out what they're going to do in the future, but they really can't because they got to pay back the last four years. And so this book, Debt-Free Degree, uh, gives a step-by-step -step plan for how you can pay cash for college. Now, when I say pay cash, I'm talking about just really using scholarships, grants, maybe going to community college and cash flow in that. And I give the step-by-step -step plan on how to do that from seventh grade throughout 12th grade. How do we undo kind of the mental programming, like Ty just said, and you expounded on, it's become the norm and it's strategically become the norm because when Ty and I went to college, student loans was not the first thing presented to us. Mm -hmm. Now my background prior to his and her money was in education primarily at the high school level. Mm -hmm. And it is now absolutely just like assumed. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally assumed that you are going to go the student loan route on the same screen when you go through FAFSA and all that, there's a one button for student loans. There's another button for, for everything. It's literally one click away from signing up for student loans. And in a lot of instances, the parents that have the high school students, that are ones that are headed to college right now, themselves are student loan recipients and are themselves paying off student loans. So to them, it's just the way that things are. How do we undo that mental program that has gone on for a real hardcore the last decade? Yeah, the number one thing that we got to do is uh, we got to have the conversation and we got to take debt off the table. 
Okay, we have to really start educating our people why debt is not something that we want in our lives. So this is student loans, this is credit cards. I think once we really address that on, uh, that's when we can actually make a huge difference. But like you said, it's easy. It is an easy thing to just sign up for student loans and go off to college. I believe this generation prefers easy and fast. They don't prefer uh, patience, longevity, and hard work. If I can go to school, get this education, and just play, uh, get the student loans now, I'll worry about that down the road. But if you ask the graduates who graduated in the year 1999 from college uh, today how they feel, nearly 50% of them would tell you, we regret that decision uh, because out of those 50%, they still owe 50% of their student loans 20 years later. So having this mindset of um, the student loans is normal and I'll pay for it down the road. No, what you're going to be doing is paying a lot of interest and you're going to be stressed. And so one of the things I'm doing to kind of flip this mindset is really educate uh, what is debt and why is it important to avoid debt, avoid student loans. And then also, I can't just teach that. I got to teach them, hey, here are the steps on how to go to college debt free. And that's what I do in the book. Yeah, I love how you said uh, we need to first take debt off the table. Mm-hmm. And I think that you can start having that conversation with your children at a very young age. Like, look, if you go, we're definitely going to college, right? If you do go to college, <laughs> it's not going to be with debt. So talk yeah. about ways that parents can prepare their children to go to college debt free. Well, it, it starts as early. It starts as early as you can. You know, my brother-in-law, Belief Mail, and my sister, Yvette Givens, have uh, four beautiful kids. I have three nephews and one little niece. And we are already having that conversation about debt, about uh, student loans, and really just about money and how we feel and how we approach money. And so I don't think there's really no a certain age that you need to have the conversation, have it as early as you possibly can. But to any parents that may be listening right now, like, okay, I haven't done it. um, I say start right now. So in my book, I talk about, hey, in the seventh grade, here's the conversations you need to be having. One of my good friends here in Nashville, Tennessee, she has her own private elementary school. And every single year she takes her fifth graders. Now hear me clearly, her fifth graders on college tours. And I asked her, I said, girl, these kids don't know what they're doing. She said, exactly. But they see what they're doing. And what we can visually put inside of their their minds, this is an impressionable time for them. So they're going to grow up remembering, I went to this college. I went to this big building. They're going to start asking questions. Well, what was that? How can I go there? Well, this is how you go there. It's going to start with your grades. You got to actually be a good student. You got to get straight A's. But you got to have that conversation. But one thing with parents, what I tell them is like, hey, once you are debt free, Once you have a fully funded emergency fund and once you are established and investing into your financial future, into your retirement, I want you to look into an ESA or 529. The average person doesn't even know or really understand what an ESA is and that's an educational savings account. It allows you to put a certain amount of money in there and you get compound interest. And if you do that for, say, for 18 years, you can have anywhere between eighty dollars to $100,000 by the time your student graduates. And so it's all about really preparing and having that conversation earlier on. And I literally walked through the book, what to do in the seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, what classes should be taken, AP classes, dual enrollment classes, when should you take the uh, the, the practice ACT and the practice SAT, or when should you start building your college resume and start looking into leadership opportunities and um, what are the key steps that you need to be doing every single year to set yourself up to get and to qualify for scholarships. And I spend a lot of time, you guys, really talking about how to really master the ACT and SAT because the difference between 1.3 points is a partial ride and a full ride. And so we really deep dive into, uh, into the information on the book. Nice. What's your advice on college evaluation, the process yeah. for young, you know, so- sophomores, juniors, seniors, because I know that the discourse at one time was to stick to the state schools because, you know, you get that in-state tuition, but in, in some situations like here in Illinois, the University of Illinois is one of the most expensive schools in the country. Yeah. And sometimes if you look at a school down south and pay out of school tuition, it's still half of what you would have paid to stay in school at a big in-state college like the University of Illinois. So today, in today's time, you know, based on the research and the work that you've been doing, what are some things we should be taking into the evaluation process with our kids, trying to help them make the right decision for what school they should be going to? 
Yeah, so I agree with you on that part. Um, one of the key things I'm telling young people and their parents is your dream school should be an affordable school. An affordable school should be a school that you can get through 100% debt free. So let's say for an example, let's talk about uh, you, you all's college there. If that is the most expensive school and you can go to maybe the school across the street that's in another different state for cheaper, that's your best affordable option. So the average in-state is going to be your ideal situation. For an example, here in the state of Tennessee, you can go to a local in-state here in between six to $11,000, depending on which in-state you, you may choose. Um, but in your case, it's going to be very expensive. And so I want you to look at the best option. But before you even look at a school, I want you to look at your career path. What is the vision that you want to do? Where do you want to go? Let's, let's assess that first. Is it a, prof a profitable career? Um, and then once you do that, let's look at the, the degrees that it takes to get there. For an example, I had a young person come up to me and tell me that uh, he wants to be a youth pastor. So he was going to go to a particular school and spend $120,000 to get his uh, seminary degree. And I said, man, that is a, that is a dumb decision. Okay. I'm not spending a hundred and something thousand dollars to only be making $35,000. You can find you an affordable school that is going to maybe cost you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get your biblical uh, degree. And so that way now it makes sense. So we got to have the conversation of, is this career profitable? What is the degree that is needed? Can I go to a tech school? Can I go to a community college? And we have to get out of this myth that if I, if I go to a community college means that I failed. No, it actually means that you're smart. It means that you're actually thinking about your future. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing in this generation is that we're allowing our students to take a kid's approach to an adult decision. Mm -hmm. I do not want them to get into their adult years and they're upset at their kid approach that they did 20 years, 30 years ago. So we got to sit down and guide them along this journey, which again, I keep saying this, I talk about that in my book, Debt Free Degree. Love reading, but wish you had more time to get into your favorite books? What if you could use the time you already have and listen to the books you already love? Well, now you can with Audible. With Audible Books, you can be inspired, entertained, and educated anywhere, anytime. Choose from the bestsellers in self-development, business, nonfiction, and more. So what are you waiting for? Your first 30 days are free. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible to get started today. That's hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible. Like I like how you walk that person through the, the variables. $120,000 degree versus, you know, $30,000, $35,000 career. Are there any um, resources out there that parents can walk their kid, can do that same exercise if their kid says, I want to be um, a, a physical trainer or I yeah. want to be a nurse? You know, can we walk, like what, how can we figure out, like this is how much nurses are projected to make. And if you go to this college, this is how much the degree would cost you. How I can think that's so important because as you said, they're taking a kid approach. A lot of times we don't know what we want. When no. I was in college, I too tell people, if I had a chance to do it all over again, I would go to a junior college first and then go to um, the four year college, which was University of Illinois. Absolutely. Um, because I would have saved way much more money. Most of the classes anyway, the prerequisites for the first two years are the same exact classes, right? And yeah. you're paying double, sometimes quadruple the amount that you would if you were going to a junior college. So I think that's a really important step to take your kids through. What's the average salary that this career may take you and how much is this school going to cost you? Absolutely. So when it comes to looking up the average salaries of, of out there, the best website that I found um, is called Find Your Calling. Go to that website, type in, they're going to ask you five questions. You know, what are you passionate about? What do you really like? And then when you go there, they're going to tell you like, hey, here are the careers and the average salary uh, that these careers offer. One thing I love about this website is they're going to give them all kind of careers, careers that they probably didn't even know existed uh, because they're not common uh, that we talked about in high schools. Now, once you get done with that website and you find out, you know, the careers and it tells you what degrees are the best uh, options for this particular career, then I want them to come back to my website, anthonyoneal.com, and I really break it down like, hey, okay, here's a degree and here are your, 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 here's a calculator. Here's what you need to be doing. And I have a lot of resources on there from looking up scholarships, uh, having a college calculator. We're going to walk them through the step-by-step -step process on, hey, here's how you're going to get into this college. Here are the best college options out there for you. And, the, and we're going to ask some questions, like how much do you have saved? And we're going to tell them, hey, this is how much you need. And here's the best route to get to this particular number. But you guys are absolutely right. We have to know 
what is our career path? The average student just jumps into college to taking a kid's approach because that's where their family wants them to go. That's where their peers are going. But none of them's really stepping back and just saying two things, which I think is the most important things they need to be saying up front. Number one, I'm not doing debt. I'm not considering that. Then number two, here's my vision. Here is where I want to go. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a school teacher. I want to be a carpenter. I want to do this. I want to be that. Once we can really get those two things in place, then now we start really taking time to really work on it. We're going to save money by going to a community college, maybe like you said. Then we're going to find money. We're going to be looking up grants, scholarships, going around to our local businesses and saying, hey, can we make some partnership together? And then we're going to be working. You know, we can work. Let's say, for example, you have nothing saved, you can still pay cash and work your way through community college while you're still looking up grants and scholarships to go on to that four-year university. Now, there's some parents that are listening or watching right now. They're like, oh my goodness, I have a junior or a senior in high school. I have no money saved. I wish that I would have had received your book 10 years ago. What would you say to that parent um, that doesn't have any money saved up, but their child is already a junior or a senior in high school? I, I can relate. You know, my parents did not have the game plan when I was a junior. I was sitting in my high school auditorium and my junior year is the last semester of my junior year. And one of the local uh, financial aid um, counselors came by and said, hey, if you have not started already, you're late. And me and my family just this really just kind of freaked out. We panicked. Like, what are we going to do? And because of that, I made some bad decisions. Now, gratefully, um, I had my father's GI Bill and I had an NFL scholarship, partial scholarship, and that took care of my school, but I still took out student loans. What I recommend to uh, parents who do not have uh, the money, do not have the financial resources, is to be honest with their kids up front. Number one, you're not going to touch your, your emergency fund. Number two, you're not going to be pulling from your retirement and stop investing into your retirement. Because here's the truth. You're going to retire. Your son or daughter may or may not complete school. And so you're going to tell them up front, you're going to have to really step up, son. You're going to have to really step up, daughter. Um, I know you want to go off to the school, but I want to help you out by avoiding debt. So I'm not going to allow you to take out any student loans. What is the option? Where do you want to go? You want to be a school teacher? Okay, cool. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go to community college. Your father and I, we're going to help you cash flow that. But right now, these next few years, you need to be working every single day, looking up grants and scholarships, spending one hour a day, and we're going to be applying for it. So by the time you do get to that sophomore year and you're ready to transition, we have the cash and the resources and the scholarships to get you into that. But I tell parents, do not feel as if you have failed them because you're not properly prepared. Right now is the best time to where you can guide them along this journey to make sure they make the best decisions for their future. Now, you stated that a big part of going to college and getting your degree debt free is grants and scholarships. And now, if you type that into Google, all kind of results are going to come up. Are there some reputable sources out there to do your searches when it comes to trying to find grants and scholarships? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, AnthonyO'Neill.com. I have you all covered. <laughs> so I have a debt-free degree scholarship uh, resource on my page to where you can type in your, uh, your state, your city, your, your career path that you want to go to. And I literally have thousands and thousands and thousands of scholarships uh, that are out there. And then also as well, um, uh, my team and I were giving away up to $10,000 worth of scholarships um, throughout this entire month. It will be ending October 31st. Uh, but if they can do, do it now and go apply for it now, you may be able to qualify for one of the scholarships inside of it. But anthonyoneal.com forward slash scholarships um, is where you can go to find some reputable. We vetted all of them. They're current um, and we're updating them every single week, um, making sure that we have everything in there because I want to help. I can't just be out here just teaching people how to get scholarships. Um, I told my team I need a scholarship search tool on my website. And so we have the number one scholarship tool um, out there in America currently. Love it. We'll have all the links in the show notes. So what are some advice that you would give to parents who um, children are already currently in college and they want their children to continue to go the debt-free route? What are some advice that you can give them so they can be successful while in college? Number one, have the money talk. Let's sit down and and tell them, hey, number one, we're going to avoid debt. Number two, we're going to get on a budget. We're going to have a vision for our money. You know, I'm a spiritual guy and I believe that where there is no vision, that's where people perish. I think that's the same thing with our money, where there is no vision for our money. That's when it perishes. So have the conversation with them about money and and make sure that you're educating them on all the good things. Number two, this generation is so into social media. I'm into social media and I want to just remind parents and make sure they have the conversation saying, hey, son, hey, daughter, keep your social media clean. Remember to be thinking about your future. 
if you're at a fraternity party or if you're at a sorority party or maybe just at a nice event on the college campus, there's a bunch of red cups around, you know, hey, maybe that's not the right picture to post on Instagram because you never know who may be looking at you, who may be following you, maybe interested and maybe offering you a job, a career, but they can see that picture and have the wrong perception of you because perception is uh, their reality. And so make sure you keep it clean on social media and then just really get to know your environment, man. I, I teach it to young people, you know, start looking at your professors, start just building that relationship with them, start identifying some key influencers, not just within your college, but the, within that city, who can help you uh, maybe get into your uh, career position. If you're trying to be a school teacher, are you talking to school teachers in the local community? Are you, do you know uh, the superintendent? Do you know the mayor? Start really getting creative about your surroundings and your environments and start thinking about your future while you're enjoying your present. Um, and then after that, really just remember your why. Remember why are you here? You're not here to have a good time. You're here to prepare yourself for the future. You're here to secure that degree uh, so that you can be the best young man, the best young lady um, out there in whatever particular career space you plan on going to. Um, I read my why every single day before um, I go to the gym. I wake up every single day at 4.30 a.m. And the very first thing I do is I read my word and I read my why. And I believe that's one thing that young people need to do every single day. When they first wake up, remember their vision. So that way, when they get out there, any distractions that may come up, they remember their vision. And so um, those are the main things that I would tell uh, a parent to remind their kids that, hey, now is the time for you to make better decisions because the caliber of your future will be determined by the choices you made today. Now, before we wrap up, you mentioned something and I want to kind of go back because it's super important. You mentioned in one of uh, you were talking earlier about two things, dual enrollment and um, AP classes. Mm -hmm. Can for those parents who have maybe heard about those things on a cursory level, don't really understand what those are and how they connect to going to college debt free. Can you break it down just a little bit about how important these things are? I mean, these are very, 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 very important. And these work in different, uh, they work in different capacities in different states. But one thing I do love about uh, dual enrollment classes is that if you really do this thing right, you can actually graduate high school and be going into your sophomore, junior year in college. And so this has literally saved you a whole bunch of money because you took care of it while you was in high school. Um, but I really deep dive in my book about AP classes, dual enrollment classes, honor classes, all these really extra classes that really set your kid up for um, an advancement as far as an over other kids and how it helps their college experience. Um, but I'm excited about those. I tell young people that all the time, if you can get into any of these classes, take advantage of them because it will help out your college experience. Awesome. So tell everybody a little bit more about what they'll find in your book and how they can pick up a copy. Again, it's a debt-free degree, and it gives you the step-by-step -step plan on how to pay cash uh, for college and how to get into college debt-free. You can visit anthonyoneal.com. Um, you can go to daveramsey.com. Or if you're an Amazon lover, um, you can go to amazon.com and pick up the book as well, or, or any local bookstore, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, you name it. But I'm um, really excited. But there's a lot of free resources on my website that uh, you can go and, and order, order the book and get some of the free college visit checklists that I have on the website, scholarship search tool, the college calendar calculator and some other great, great resources. So I would encourage you to go to anthonyneal.com to learn more about me and everything around student loans that my team and I are doing. Where can people find you on social? Man, you know, I'm an Instagram man. <laughs> so they can find me at Anthony O'Neill every single day. I'm dropping some, some nuggets and some jewels to help our millennials really get there. You won't see uh, the latest shoes, the latest shirt that I'm wearing, uh, but you will be able to get uh, some encouragement and some guidance on how to really progress in life. This has been great. We'll be sure awesome. to have links in the show notes. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure people are headed to go pick up debt-free degree right now. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Anthony. Oh, thank you all. The TNT, the dynamic team. I love y'all.